Hey guys, this is Guy Gaming here today, finally back with part 2 to our last tutorial. At least I think it was our last tutorial where I showed you guys how to make terrain out of nothing, like dynamically in-game. Today I'm going to teach you how to do that again, but this time I'm going to teach you how to draw it with the mouse. So there are some limitations. Um, you can only click on things that are already there, so like I can't just click out into the void, I have to only click on stuff that's close. So as you can see here though, when I click, it creates new terrain. I can also click and hold and it will just create new stuff all over the place. <laughs> and yeah, it's just a way to kind of like draw terrain in game. And this would be seeable by all the players in the game. So like, for example, if you had a lot of players, they could each draw like their own island or whatever. It's really up to whatever they want to do with it. And of course, you see the circle follows my mouse around. I don't have like a tool equipped or anything. Of course, that would be up to you to make that. Um, I'm not going to be showing that in this tutorial. I'm just showing how this works. If you'd like a tutorial like that, let me know and I'm sure I can throw one together but for right now I'm just going to show you how to do the drawing part and not like putting it all together because you could also make like sliders and stuff to change the size or the shape of the drawer just like the terrain tools in studio here um, if they are the same as they used to be well it looks like they change the terrain tools again so I'm not really sure how to change it <laughs> but you used to be able to like have sliders and stuff and buttons to change the shape and um, size of the terrain drawing tools but I don't know where that went but that's not that's for another video so let's go ahead and jump into the scripts you will want to watch this video all the way through this can be pretty intricate let me go through and show you what you need all now so that you don't have to worry about that later. So I'll just start from the top and go down. So in replicated storage, you'll need an event. I called mine mouse event. You'll probably want to call yours that as well. Make sure you capitalize the M and the E and then it's all one word. Then in server script storage, you'll want a script. And then inside of the starter GUI, you'll want a part. Go ahead and call it terrain part. With the T capital and the P capital and then inside of starter player inside of starter player scripts go ahead and add a local script so the first script we're gonna look at is the local script because this is where pretty much all the heavy lifting with the mouse is done and this is actually probably one of the more intimidating looking scripts that I've done but it's really not that bad once you break it down so we'll just go line by line like we usually do and I'll show you what everything does so as you can see here, like usual, on the first line we just get the local player and then we just set up a variable to check to see if the player is holding their mouse down. Next we get the player's character whenever they're added so that we can make sure if the player dies they'll be able to still use their mouse and everything. This is probably around the area you'll want to change if you want to make this toggleable, which I'm sure you will, because the way this is right now it just has it so that the player, whenever they spawn, they gain the ability to draw terrain. So anyways, we go ahead and we set up a variable for the ghost. And like I said, that's stored in the player's GUI right here. It's called terrain part. And we're just going to clone that. And then we're going to put it into the camera in workspace. So that way only the player that has the mouse is able to see it. So you can only see your own ghost part on your own screen. We will come back to this function in a minute. And we're actually going to look at this function here on the bottom. So this function here is the move one. So we just get the player's mouse and create an event to trigger whenever the player moves their mouse. And so basically, Every time the player moves their mouse, we're just making sure that the target is not equal to nil so that they're actually pointing their mouse at something. Because if you don't, this throws a lot of errors and that the player um, isn't looking at the terrain part. So what that means is if we remove this part like that and then when we play test it, the ball will fly backwards every time because it actually interacts with itself. So your mouse, whenever it moves, 
it's intersecting with itself so it tries to move back so that it doesn't intersect with itself so you yeah you'll just want to go ahead and add this so that that doesn't happen next we just get the mouse's position and we just move the ghost to the mouse's position you don't really have to worry about all this unless you want to change the way the ghost actually looks so for example if you change this value here it will change how high up the ghost is so as you can see when we play test really quick, that the ghost kind of floats just a little bit above the land, but you can change that value. If you change it to one, it will actually float above, or if you change it to zero, it'll float like right through the middle of it and so on. Next, we're going to be looking at these two event listeners here. So basically for each of these, we're getting the user input service. This one is for input begin. This is for when input ended. So essentially when the player clicks their mouse down and then when they let go. So for each of these, we're getting the input and then just a temp variable that we have to get, but we don't use. So then we just check the input type to make sure that it is their mouse button one, which is their left mouse button. And if that's the case, then we just set holding equal to not holding, which means in this case that it will be set to true because it starts out as false. And then we just call make terrain. Otherwise, when the player lets go of their mouse, we just set holding equal to not holding, which will set it back to false. And so essentially, what make terrain does when that is called when we push down the mouse button is that it will while the holding variable is true so until this is called when we let go of our mouse it will just call the event in replicated storage and fire the position of the ghost to the server so that the server can go ahead and draw the terrain if we didn't do this only the player that was drawing the terrain would be able to see it and interact with it. So if you wanted players to be able to draw their own islands only on their own screen, you can move this stuff from the script we're about to look at into this script. But the way we have it set up right now, everyone will be able to see the changes. And then we just wait point one so we don't reach infinite loops and crash. So next and pretty much last, we're just going to look at the script in the server script service. And essentially this one's really easy. We're just going to be doing what we did last time and we are just going to be listening for that mouse event and getting the position of the ghost part. And when we do, we're just going to go ahead and call fill ball on terrain at the ghost position with the radius and then the material we want. And of course, like I said, you can have sliders and everything. You can make these variable like the material and the radius, but I'm not going to show that here. I recommend making the radius about half of the size of your ghost part. So you can see here that my ghost part, the size is eight by eight by eight. So my radius is four just so that it makes sense when you're drawing and it looks accurate. But anyways guys, that is going to do it for this tutorial. I'll be sure to post the scripts down in the pastebin link in the description. You guys can check them out there. If you have any trouble or any questions or any tutorial suggestions, let me know in the comments. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a Happy New Year and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later, goodbye.